All right, Jeet Kune Do, uh, Monday the 27th of April. Let's bow this in real fast. Chinese, Filipino, Thai, Indonesian, French and Dog Brothers, Japanese. Um, last week, we uh, had a few minutes left over at the end for trapping, and I want to, I, because I, this is supposed to bridge so well with Wing Chun, I want to go right back into trapping, and I'm going to bring Gene in to do it, and I know mo you're all training by yourselves, so we'll, we'll work on that. But this will probably be, because um, we didn't get to the trapping in the yellow sash, so this will actually be a really good supplement to this. So now we're in a right lead. Put your right side forward, okay? So all that attribute training and centerline domination, attribute refinement gets to pay off here. So we start in our curriculum in a high reference point. We have seven basic traps. I'll go over them a few times with Gene. Then I'll work on them with you in the air and I'll, I'll keep you here for a little while, okay? So slap and hit, that's number one. So if she slaps my with her left hand and that opens the line. So I slap and hit with my knife hand. Let's change sides, okay? And for number one, um, just let me change this angle, everybody. Okay, that's better. Um, don't move, I promise I'm not gonna hit you. For number one, let's assume that we scored, okay? Um, so you can gua choy. That's the back fist with the knuckles. That's a little bit more traditional. Um, I like the sutsal or the sokal, okay? That is the backhand hammer fist, all right? But um, again, I'm not being disrespectful. Traditional JKD trapping, you'd probably learn like, you know, boom, enter the dragon against um, Bob Wall. It's, it's a gua choy with the back fist, but um, which I realize is not, it's a movie, but um, that's what everybody seems to remember about JKD trapping. Um, but you have all this protective tissue right here. So I, my preference is for the satsang, but boom, if you scored with the gua choy or the sokol or the satsang, that's number one, slap and hit. Okay, so stay right here. If you're by yourself, you just work on that. Right hand doesn't move. Rear hand in the most non-telegraphic way as possible just enters because the moment I do anything, I tense up, that's not it. I want to be completely relaxed and I want to enter. Okay, and even if you're working by yourself, just pay a lot of attention, of attention to your preparation in that, do you have any? Are you taking a breath? Are you tensing? Are you, I know that's like crazy hyperbole, but are you telegraphing or are you just entering? And even with a partner, that's really what you're trying to cultivate. So that's our academy trapping basic number one. Number two, I start like number one, but in the interest of preserving the right side of her face, she parries across center line with her left hand. So my left hand, I'm moving my fingers on purpose, it's just gonna skip up and lops out. So number two is pox out, lops out. Once again, keep your thumb out of it. Most people, even in their first lesson, can go from here to here, but the number one correction that I make in person is just saying something like, that was 95% awesome, the only other 5%, remember to keep your thumb out of it. Because you don't wanna be committed. If this person has crazy gorilla strength and you have, I'm not calling you a gorilla, okay? Um, this hyper, hy hypothetical attacker, um, and you are committed with your thumb, depending on the relative strength of that person, that's a really good recipe for a broken thumb. And even on our complementary hand, that's not something that we want. So number two, pox out, lops out, okay? And, um, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying not to, my wife is being very nice and training and letting me 
have a partner to train on. Where this is really at is jerking down towards your left hip on this side. So they have a little bit of like whiplash. Because if you're looking at this, I mean, I'm going slow enough. She could, she could get a hand up, but she's trying not to ruin my demo. So if you're wondering, well, how would that ever work? In, in actuality, that little bit of whiplash, and I'm, I'm only doing like 15%, when you yank them down, that kind of gives them that whiplash feel. That's supposed to take away their ability to compute where the attack is coming from. But that's our number two in our academy trapping basics. Don't block this, please. Number one, I score. Slap and hit. Pock set down. Number two, slap and hit. Pull and hit. You could... Sokol, you could guachoy, you could sutsao. Um, I'm keeping you away from vertical punches because we're going to get more into that with three and four. Okay? Speaking of which, so now I'm going vertical. She's going to stop me on center line. If she pushes past center line, well, I'm just going to go to number two because that I already learned that response. If she stops me on or before center line, I'm sliding in and it's a double slap and hit. Once again, I'm not, this is wrong, doing it like this, because she's being nice, she's, she doesn't want to ruin my demo. Yeah, that arm is unoccupied, that line is unoccupied. So that's, that's our three. And I'm not gonna stand there, I'm gonna hit, maybe push her back, uh, maybe knee in the quad, you know, there's a bunch of things I can do, okay? Um, so double pox out, double slap and hit is number three. Four. Start like three, punch up this open line, finish like three. So it's pox out, chung choy, loy pox out. Slap and hit, vertical punch, inside slap and hit. Those are the first four. Um, give me a couple minutes, but I'll need you back. Okay, so let's make sure this might, rather than giving you all seven, and I know since people are by themselves, let's work it so that what I'm doing looks like what you're doing, but this way at least you know what it, what it would look like with another person, okay? So, you know, high reference point, number one is just that. Just nice and relaxed, no preparation, and we just enter, right? And whatever, whatever shape you want, this right hand or whichever, the, 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 if you want to work your left, um, that's fine too. Whatever side you want to put in front, Okay. Um, number two, you start with that and then you're going to pull and you're still going to score. So you wanted that shot, whatever form it's taking, Guachoy, Sutsal, Sokol, but they push past center line. So you pull and hit, slap and hit, pull and hit, slap and hit, pull and hit, slap and hit, pull and hit. Okay, that's going to be our number two. Number three, slap and hit with the vertical fist, inside slap and score. Right, so dub one, two, double slap and hit. You could be a G if you wanted to, right? Go up the line. You could do a palm down Western punch. That To me, that feels bizarre just based on my background. I'm not saying that would be wrong, but... It's this line. You could do Phoenix Fist from Kempo if you really wanted to, right? It's a vertical line. And that's going to enter. And that's our number three. Our number four starts like three, punches up the open line, finishes like three. That's why I made it number four, because it's number four is number three with one additional motion, right? So three, you move right in. Slap and hit, inside slap and hit. Four, slap and hit, punch, inside slap and hit. Um, the biggest mistake that I see people make on four, slap and hit, punch and pull. I know that's a, let's, let me do it from this side. Slap and hit, punch and pull this all the way back to inside slap and hit. And my favorite, you probably have heard this because I repeat a lot of the same stuff. My favorite analogy is American football. If I'm at the 10-yard line, I want this to score, 
and then I want my touchdown from the 10 yard line, right? If I'm here, I have this distraction, right? But, I, but when this distraction comes in, I don't want to move back to the 40 yard line, right? This hand stays here. So one punch, two. Um, when I actually train this with people, they do it on me, they'll puck, and this is the hand that I use to parry, and I'm talking about number four only, I will actually grab their right hand because the punch is going to come from the left hand, and I don't want them to move this hand, the right hand, which is already entered. Punch, move in and score. That's a really important detail that you're not going pox out, punch, and pulling this back. I mean, I'm, I'm really exaggerating, but even that is pretty bad because I lost all that ground. I already got this far, punch, score. That's where I want to be, okay? So, again, number one, just... Slap and hit, relaxed, non-telegraphic. Pretend that their arm is the only thing preventing you from hitting the right side of their face with this or this or this. So slap it out of the way and score. Try to go from a place of complete relaxation. Two starts like that. They push past center line. So I pull and hit, slap and hit, pull and hit. Slap and hit, pull and hit. When you, I'm gonna standardize it on my right side, okay, everybody, I'll call it on my right side. When you do that right hand attack, move it over slightly to your left so that you simulate that parrying. Remember, this is when your partner parries across center line that sets up that lop sound really well, okay? So one, slap and hit, two, slap and hit, pull and hit. Three, I'm coming in straight. So slap and chung choy, inside slap, right? So one, two, and you might even, I know this is starting to look like a bong sound, like you might lean your left side in a little bit. I mean, I, I have no problem stipulating to this. I'm a shorter guy, I have shorter appendages. Um, when I do this one, I lean the left side of my body in a little bit so that I can really drill, not like an elbow strike, but I can really push down with that left elbow. Um, because I, like I showed you a few minutes ago, I don't want that line to be unoccupied, right? You remember when I, when I was doing number three with Gene, um, and I showed you the wrong version where there's no cohesion, right? Versus um, like digging in a little bit. Because if you dig that left, again, if you're doing it from a right side or right lead, if you dig that left elbow in, you can continue like pushing back and punching them in the face for a couple of beats. Like it's not going to last all day long, but that first shot could score. You could push again and try another one or again, like go into some other kind of structure. Okay, so that's that's three. And then four starts like three, we punch, and then finishes like three, okay? So where we, where I really try to take a Jeet Kune Do approach to trapping is once we learn, there's three more of them, but let's for, for this class, and I'll stay with trapping for maybe, maybe five to 10 more minutes and then we'll move on to some other material. But um, once we learn those first seven in a high reference point, our next level is Junfon level two. We're going into our first entry, okay? So, if you, if you want to be in your lead, this is going to be super simple, I'm a very high level group here. So I'm working in a right lead here. Um, if I just lean back and imagine jamming that 
sidekick. It's a low sidekick. It would be on their shin as they, so if I'm your opponent, if I move in on you, right, as I'm moving in on you, boom, you move back and jam. Okay, so normally we call the sidekick a juck tech, um, but when we do it in this manner, it becomes a jeek tech, an intercepting kick. And Pardon me. Um, you can you can do a G tech with almost any tool. It's that concept of interception that um, that makes it a G tech, right? So as your opponent is moving in on you, that's when you're boom fading back and blasting the shins, right? Um, when I developed this, though, we found that if I'm the feeder feeding a step and slide every single time was it's a worthwhile exercise it gets a little old after about three minutes so what we just started doing is if i'm doing the trapping i just move in to the sidekick so on the low line you know where whatever structure I'm just, it's like a, like a pendulum type of footwork. Boom, as offense. And what's happening here, let's try this in the air, and then I'll show you on a partner. So let's, let's go back for a second, even before I involve Gene again. So high reference point, one, slap and hit. Two, slap and hit, pull and hit. Three, double slap and hit. Four, slap and hit, punch on the open line, inside slap and hit. Let's just stick with the first four. The reference point no longer exists from the standpoint of you already extracted your fundamental understanding of those traps from it. So this is actually, this is one of my pet peeves and um, Sifu Andy Kimura, the, the son of uh, Sigung Taki Kimura. Of course, you know, Sigung Taki and uh, Sifu Inosanto are the only two living people who are still certified at the instructor level by Bruce Lee. Um, and Sigung Taki is, you know, it heads up the the Jun Fon Gung Fu Institute of Seattle. And he's, he turned 96 when I was over there in March before everything got crazy and shut down. Um, his role, he's 96, is, is one of, I'm not being disrespectful, one of more of an advisor. And Sifu Andy, his son, is doing the bulk of the teaching. Well, Sifu Andy confirmed, and this made me very happy, that I'll show you when I bring Gene in that my pet peeve is not something that you should be doing, okay? So you, number one, slap and hit. Number two, slap and hit, get pushed across center line, pull and hit. Number two, double slap and hit. Number three, slap and hit, punch, inside slap and hit. Keep those four, because if I do all seven, I mean, I think this is, I, I know, I shouldn't say I think. This is a very advanced group, but let's stick with four to really get the concept down. Because if you get the concept, then we're good to go. And you can, you can build your own techniques, okay? So if we think about that G-Tech as an entry or as defense, imagine for a second that my imaginary opponent, I know you're by yourself and I will be too for the next few moments here, Imagine your, your imaginary opponent is a southpaw and they're standing there with good southpaw Baijiang structure, i.e. this hand is up. If they're lazy and their hand is down, unless they're a, like a Muhammad Ali type and they're baiting you, well, you're just going to hit them, okay? But if their hand is up, we need to destroy this structure so that we can come into our, our trapping offense. So number one, right, was here, 
Well, if I G tech and fall into that technique, it's a controlled fall. I started in a right lead. I have to replace my right lead, G tech pox out, but not, this is my pet peeve, gentlemen. G tech reference point pox out because you don't need that anymore. You already, it, it, again, my analogy, and I'm not insulting anybody, the high reference point is training wheels. We learned our, our Academy seven basic traps with the training wheels, so it was worthwhile. Now that you know, and I know we're working on four out of the seven, now that you know those four, the training wheels come off. And our goal is to be able to ride a two-wheeler, which in this analogy, is to have a prayer of being able to fight with some of this material, both offensively and defensively. So I'm going to bring Gene in. Quick, super lightning, quick review, right, Lee? One, and let's say, let's say on that one I score. Two, three, and four. Okay, so now she just holds, make this your sound pub, bend this arm a little bit. Good. Okay, so look, I'm gonna, for, first I'm gonna do it wrong, okay? Here's entry number one wrong with my pet peeve. G Tech reference point pox out. That reference point is not necessary. You already learned it. We are, we're in the process of taking the training wheels off. G Tech pox out. I fall right into the trap. She parries across center line. G tech, pox out, lops out. Number two, I come in straight with this, um, with this chung choy. There's my number three. I come in straight, I punch on the open line and I finish. There's number four. We're gonna switch sides for you, okay? So she's a southpaw. She has good structure. She's guarding her face. Whether even she, if she's tie boxing or she's, it doesn't matter. Okay. Her hands are up. G tech pox out. Number one. G tech pox out, lops out. Number two. G tech pox out, loy pox out. Number three. G tech pox out, chung choy, loy pox out. Number four. No difference, no difference, okay? Except we have an entry. I get you. <laughs> the, the entry is the only difference, but the seven traps of which we're doing four right now remain the same, okay? So that's G-Tech. And again, there's really two ideas behind the G-Tech. Hands up. She, move back just a tad. She moves in on me, whom and I jam, bam, and I fall into trapping. Or, stay right there, I'm in my structure, boom, I enter, bam, and then I move into trapping, okay? Either of those are acceptable. Sometimes certain groups focus on a particular one, like if you're in Sifu Tim Tack at school, that G Tech is usually going to be defensive, like really mean. They like to just blast that shin, but they like to work that that G Tech as defense. Now I want to I want to work on entry number two, and we're going to work entry number two as pure defense. This is off the jab. Okay, I'm going to bring you back in a minute. Okay, so. Let's, let's all work on this together in the air so that you can think about this and practice this. And remember, gentlemen, one, two, three, four, okay? They're never going to change. And they never change even as the entry changes throughout the curriculum. Okay, so let's all get in a right lead. Right, right lead. Okay, so split entry. Your left hand puts a lead on it, or a lid on it, lid, and your right hand attacks. When, um, when I shadow box the split entry, I usually slap my bicep. You don't have to do that. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be the pox out 
on their arm. I also, I want to move my head slightly to my left. I'm going to standardize this on one side for all of you against the, the southpaw, okay? And then you can play with it in the other lead um, at your leisure, okay? So if I'm, if I'm fighting a southpaw, my head moves outside the jab, my left hand puts a lid on it, my right hand attacks. I could chung choi, I could phoenix fist, I could palm down western punch. Um, in my kids program, I don't teach bugs because Guru and Asanta once shared with us that he's um, he's been hit twice around the orbital regions by somebody swinging a baseball bat at him who wanted to hurt him. And he's been in class accidentally hit with bugs by another martial arts student. And he thinks the bugs hurt worse. Okay. Now I'm all about experimentation. That's why I'm a full dog brother. I have 50 fights. I fight in little nothing gloves. In this instance, I'm going to take Guru Dan's word for it. I'm not going to go out and have somebody hit me in the orbital region with a baseball bat, and I'm not going to have anybody BUG me. I'm going to listen to my instructor. For that reason, I don't teach BUGs or Sungobs, different name for the same thing, in my kids' program. So in my kids' program, they split and they do a chung choy. Okay, and like this entry, which I do teach in my kids' program, they, they're going to do it as chung choy to ball and socket, okay? But the second entry is split entry, split entry to ball and socket. Now, do your split and freeze. The next moment, your right hand is already on its way as it moves into that trap. So one, two. There's two pox outs there. One, two. Split to ball and socket. Split entry. This attack is straight, whatever shape it takes. Ball and socket, it swings to the outside of their arm, their right arm, and we go for the right side of the head. Split entry to ball and socket. Split entry to ball and socket. Um, when, I, I don't know if that anybody does. Um, come on, Ori. If you have a stick, just hold this, looks like this, okay? You can, like, yeah, good. Split to ball and socket. Split to ball and socket. Split to ball and socket. One. Two, one, two. Um, and sometimes what I'll do, stay here, because I need you in a second. What, what I'll do sometimes is like, here's a stick. You could take this and put it in between, I don't want to ruin these books, but in between some books, right? And we won't, we won't leave that there. Let's say that that was tight enough to stay. Now you have a, an arm of a Wing Chun dummy, and you can practice on it, okay? Um, and just before I do this on Gene, super quick, okay? Split to ball and socket, and I score. That's number one. Split to ball and socket, but they parry across center line, so I lock. That's number two. Split to ball and socket, but I get all the way to center line, so I inside pock. That's number three. Split to ball and socket, I get all the way to the center line, I punch, and then I score, that's number four. So see what we're doing, the, the academy trapping basics, as we work through the curriculum, we have, it's gonna be a total, I'm not gonna get to all of them tonight, seven entries. We're learning our basic seven off of seven entries throughout the curriculum. Then of course we have two leads. So we want to be able to do that on both sides. So what does this look like? She's in a right lead, nice and slow. 
right straight punch, split to ball and socket. This first one, pretend that, that you don't block. Boom, I score. That's number one, right? Because number one, when we at reference point, we were there, right? It all goes back to what we learned at reference point. That was number one, pox out, and I score. So split entry, ball and socket, and I score. There's entry number two, trapping basic number one. Number two, reference point, was slap and hit, pull and hit. She jabs me, split, ball and socket, she parries across center line, pull and hit. So see, split to locks out because she, pu she pushed me across center line. Three, reference point, remember was double, Pox out. So split, she stops me on center line. And there's number three. Four, reference point, slap, I'm sorry, uh, slap and hit and I go straight, punch up the open line and then finish, right? So one, two, punch and score. So it's what I'm trying to show you is it's all progressive. It's all going to build off the seven basics. Um, super quickly, five is double lops out. Lop, lop. Okay, so if I'm, I'm going back to the reference point, pull and hit, pull and hit. Turn that, so if your right hand's up, grab with the right, hit with the left, oh, but you get blocked, pull with the left, hit with the right. Okay, so this is five, boom, here, right? Lop, lop, or grab and hit, grab and hit. Six and seven, I start like one. She parries across center line. I go for this BUG, but I get stuck on her arm. So that's called the wedge. So six, I score with a pox out. So slap and hit, wedge, slap and hit. That's six. Seven, slap and hit, wedge, pull and hit. And we're done. And the reason I'm showing you those, hold your, hold your, right? So double pull and hit was five, right? Let's go back to entry number one. G tech, pull and hit, pull and hit. Entry number one to trapping basic five. Trapping basic six, slap and hit, wedge, slap and hit. G tech, slap and hit, wedge, slap and hit. Seven, slap and hit, wedge, pull and hit. G tech, slap and hit, wedge, pull and hit. Entry number two, jab me, split, ball and socket, pull and hit, parry, pull and hit, okay? Because number five was double pull and hit. That one, that one's a little bit different because I go from the inside, see, pull and hit, pull and hit, but it's, it's the same variable. Six, slap and hit, wedge, slap and hit. So jab me, split. She crosses center line, wedge, slap and hit. Seven, jab me, split. She crosses center line, wedge, pull and hit. So those are all seven trapping basics from the first two entries. All right, I'm gonna go over one more entry with you and then I'll bring Jean back in a couple minutes here. So everybody getting a, you can pick your lead. I'm gonna, I'll work out of a right lead. Most, most of the population is right-handed. Traditionally, uh, Jeet Kune Do was started with the dominant side in front, but you can do it on a left lead. It's, it, we wanna end up bilateral anyways. We don't wanna end up, I'm so good when my left side's in front, but boy, when my right side's in front, I'm just terrible. We want bilateralism, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so fake high into a low kick. Fake the BUG into now tech. So right, I know you can't see my hands right as my BUG, let me, you know what, let me go, if I can, if I can change this just a little bit. There we go. Like right as this reaches full extension, I'm going into that groin kick. Fake the BUG to now tech, right? Because I have no intention of attacking high. 
I want to I want to draw your attention to the high line so that I can kick you in the groin or the knee. That's what I'm really looking to do. Thank the BUG to now tech. So this I'll start here, right? Fake the BUG to now tech pox out. That's number one. Fake the BUG to now tech pox out. They push across center line, lops out. That's number two. Double pox out is three. Fake high kick low, double pox out. Put the punch in between the pox outs for four, right? Fake high now, uh, kick low. Sorry, one more time. Fake high kick low, pox out, chung choy, loy pox out. Five, I just reach out and grab. Fake high, kick him in the groin, grab and hit, grab and hit. Double grab and hit, double locks out. So the right hand, five is a little bit of an outlier. My right hand just reaches out and I grab on five. Pock wedge, pock is six. Fake high, kick low, pock, wedge, pock. Pock wedge, lock is seven. Fake high, kick low, pock, wedge, locks out is seven, right? So I'll bring, I'll bring Gene back and just show you what that looks like with a partner. The first four, you should have a really good idea already. It's gonna look, the trapping's gonna look the way one through four already looked, except with that entry, fake high, kick low, moving in, right? Um, we added, let's do this real quickly, right? If you're in your reference point, five, pull and hit, pull and hit. So five is the outlier because instead of pox out, all the others start with pox out. This just turns over and laps, pulls, and then this lops. So that's five. Six and seven go back to this sutz out or this guachoy or this sokol, right? One, shoot this buji. So you start here. They cross center line against your right hand. Thread this BUG, but you get stuck on their arm. And then six, you pock that line open. Seven starts the same way, but you lock, you pull that line open, okay? So I'll bring Gene back real fast before we run out of time. Okay. And so, put you right over here. So that this this one requires a little bit more range. Go okay, all right. But um, what we're what we're trying to do again, fake high kick low, fall into our trapping. That's that's what we're working on. Fake high and kick low, fall into our trapping, right? And it's the same as what I showed you before. Um, we're not. Look, I'm going to do it wrong. Please don't do this even in the air. Fake high, kick low, reference point, trapping. That's We don't need that anymore. We only learned it from the reference point as a training methodology only. Now that we're starting to get our bearings with those, I mean, we really focused this session on the first four, but I wanted to at least throw throw five six and seven in there so you got to see them um but once we start to get our bearings with those you know we're we're good to go um now what we okay so i'll do this here um right is if you any room um, on this, there's so many ways you could rig something like this, but this is just a really easy one. Um, and I know that's got a bad angle, but like the stick is facing out. And um, if you don't have a Wing Chun dummy, this is a super easy way because all you really need is a is a, a lateral line, okay? All right, so I'll show you this super quickly because we're about to run out of time. So right lead and just hold it. Hold your right lead, but move back just a little bit. Yeah, that's great, stay there. 
So number one, fake high, kick low, and I score, right? Number two, fake high, kick low, she parries across, so I lops out. Three and four, I'm going in with the vertical fist. Fake high, kick low, double pox out is three. Fake high, kick low, pox out, insert this chong choy, finish with pox out. Four, five is the outlier. Remember everybody, right hand just reaches out and grabs. Fake high, kick low, grab, grab and hit, right? Pock, wedge, pock, slap and hit, wedge, slap and hit. Fake high, kick low, slap and hit, wedge, slap and hit. Six. Seven is the same up until the wedge. From the wedge, I'm going to pull and hit. Fake high, kick low, enter, pull and hit. Okay? Thank you. So that's all seven. That's the first three entries in my curriculum. Um, once again, gentlemen, just the... the URL, um, just so it starts ending up in more of these videos is stoopsomalc.com. If you want any more information about formalizing, like earning rank um, from me. But again, the plan is to keep these classes going um, for free because it's fun and uh, it, it certainly uh, keeps me sane. Okay, so thank you, gentlemen. Let's bow this out. All right. Chinese, Filipino, Thai, Indonesian, French and Dog Brothers, Japanese. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for joining me. I'm going to end this recording.